all from our Lord Jesus Christ. When we are baptized in Christ Jesus, we are baptized into his death. We are buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with Christ in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. This is the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord, for, for Violet Kariuki was surely chosen and claimed in baptism and therefore now lives eternally with God in heaven. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Let us pray. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, you formed us from the dust of the earth, and by your breath you gave us life. We glorify you. In Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, you tasted death for all humanity. And by raising him from the grave, you open the way to eternal life. We praise you. In the Holy Spirit, the author and giver of life, you are the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, at this time in which we gather together to worship you and celebrate the life of Violet Kariuki, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. God's grace is indeed amazing. 
and it abounds to all of us and saves us from our sins. Let us now ask God to cleanse our hearts, to redeem our memories, and to renew our confidence in the goodness of God. Let us pray. God of mercy, whose loving kindness endures forever, we confess that often we have failed to receive and give love, to care for others as we care for ourselves, to forgive and accept forgiveness. We remember good intentions that were never put into action, harsh words that were hurtful, selfish purposes that caused pain, persistent pride that would not yield. We acknowledge our fear in the face of death and our failure to accept the hope that you offer us in Jesus Christ. Hear us, Lord, as in this brief silence, we make our confession to you. Gracious God, forgive us and help us to forgive others. Heal us from the pain of self-condemnation Free us from the burden of failures that cannot be corrected. Renew us with your loving assurance that our sins have been forgiven. They are as far as the East is from the West. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now we turn to the very comforting words from the Old Testament, from Psalm 23, that lets us know just how close our Savior is to us and walks with us and cares for us. Listen now to the word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John in chapter 14, verses 1 through 6 and 25 through 7, uh, 27, record Jesus saying, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to Myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I, I am the way and the truth and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. Now I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We have come together today as a holy people. A community of brothers and sisters in Christ around the world. Family and friends who care for one another in love. We have come together today to worship and enact a holy script about our relationship with God as God's children that includes both the gift of life and and the promises from God that our physical death here on earth does not have the final word. And that God provides the deepest comfort of all and a peace that surpasses all understanding. And we have come together today to honor and celebrate the life of a holy person, Violet Kariuki, a saint of God's own choosing. Today is a day in which we are all invited to refresh our memories of the image of a new heaven and a new earth where God dwells among humanity and where there will be no more death or or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. This new heaven and new earth are the promised land, a land toward which we are traveling, a land where the water of life flows and, and hunger and thirst are no more. Today is a day in which we come to realize, if we didn't know it already, that the community of family and friends gathered together turns out to be very large. For the whole community consists of of the great communion of saints that, that transcend all time and all places. In the best of ways, Today, we celebrate a blurred line between this world and the glorious world that is yet to come. We are a community of people who bring with us today grief, for we have, at least temporarily, been separated from a loved one. But we also bring and celebrate an eternal hope through our faith in God. Our hope and faith are spelled out and underlined by the good news of the Gospel of Jesus Christ who lived and died and rose and ascended so that we too could be raised to a new life with all the saints in communion with God. Only, only the resurrection story of Jesus overcoming the cross unmasks death's fraud for good. Only Jesus' resurrection determines our victory over death. For Christ, the Son of God, is our way, our truth, and our life. Today is a day in which we, a holy people adorned in purple for violet, maybe you're holding purple for violet, led by a holy script, Give thanks to God for the gift of life given to Violet and for all the ways the grace and mercy of God have been witnessed in her. Over the last several weeks since receiving word of Violet's cancer returning with no remorse, there have been many members of First Presbyterian Church that have reached out with with first a, a gasp of air of unbelief, and one very common testimony. Violet, she is such a beautiful soul. 
every Sunday. It was a joy to see Violet in worship when, when she sang right here in this chancel with the chancel choir as well as when she came to worship in the congregation. Her smile was infectious like, like her children's smile. And her presence was full of grace and peace. Each worship we conclude with a charge to share the love and the joy and the peace of Christ with one another. And, and it is my humble opinion that Violet truly embodied this charge, not just as a response to, to worship that day, but throughout her daily life. Kathleen Lifsey, our Director of Children's and Youth Ministry here at First Pres, shared with me that, that violence, Violet once said, in my work, I, I always felt like I was doing the Lord's work. Because especially in the hardest of circumstances, I might be the only light that they saw. I asked Kathleen about a word for Violet, and she said, Positive, positive, positive. Each Sunday, as Violet departed the church, she made a point to stop and say hello to me. Her comments were, were brief, but always filled with grace and gratitude. She never failed to give God thanks for the Word and, and the good news of the message. Even over the last several months of her battle with cancer, and this makes even more sense now for me after learning that Violet moved from Kenya in 1999 to continue pursuing her degree in theology. Violet's spirit was and will continue to be felt by, by all those near her here at First Presbyterian and throughout this community. When I called Violet a few weeks ago to talk to her while she was in the hospital, she, she had one message for me. She said, I want everyone at First Presbyterian Church and in this community to, to know that I love them and appreciated the hospitality and love shown to me over the last several years. She said, I felt a part of the family and thank God for all the connections and blessings. Each Sunday, Violet's last words to me are, as I have learned in the last two weeks, the same as Nikki's. God bless you. The power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit was alive and on fire in the heart and the soul of Violet. And this church and this community are all the better for it. Through her faith and the promises of God and the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord, I truly believe Violet now basks in the glory of the Lord, reunited with all those who have gone before her. Thanks be to God for holy people to share and to be with. For the holy script and the good news of a new heaven and a new earth made possible through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. And for holy people like Violet who faithfully embody the love, the joy, and the peace of Christ. Let all God's people say, Amen. Nikki would now like to share a few words of remembrance and celebration for her mom. Our lovely godmother Violet, aka Mama Nyakenwa, better known as Mama Nyake, we love you. We thank God for having our parents who are your loving friends, Eva Gaita, Mama Tina, and the late Joseph Kaito Mirengo, who had the discernment to 
choose you to be our Godmother in our lives. We would not have chosen a perfect match. We are forever grateful and filled with gratitude. You are love. When we think and reminisce of your presence in our lives, it has been full of joy, love, peace, and understanding. You are always present. Every major and any minor moment in our lives, whether there were challenges or triumphs, you were there. You guided us and encouraged us to be always positive and to be the best we could ever be. You shared with us God's grace and mercy and showed us what it meant to love and to be loved. You are our light. You are always quick to listen to us and show us that light will never be felt, there was only darkness. Your spirit, wisdom, and love always guided us. We thank God for blessing us with you in our lives. It has been our honor to love you and to be loved by you. Even though you have departed from us physically, you will always be in our hearts and spirit. Until we meet again, Angel Violet, from your godchildren, Wamboi, Lady D, and Mariko. The peace of Christ be with you. I want to thank you, First Presbyterian Church of Lynchburg, Pastor Thompson, for working with us and putting this memorial service together with great kindness. Thank you, Pastor Dawson, for being here in support. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Peggy Howell. Thank you, thank you, Katie Munson. And to everybody else who's here whose name I didn't mention. Thank you to family and friends who are here in the sanctuary. And thank you to all who are attending virtually. We thank all the doctors and the medical staff, especially Dr. Lee Cantrell, and both Dr. Mr. Tebbit and Dr. Mrs. Tebbit. Well, it is hard to believe While it is hard to believe that we are here at this point, I give thanks for my mom's life. In her testimony that she wrote a few years ago, she says she started to grow her relationship with God at nine years old. While she knew him before then, things started to crystallize at that age. She started to make more of an effort and be more proactive, learning what it meant to be, a, what being a Christian meant. She continued this pursuit for the rest of her 61 years. Her faith moved mountains, and through her, God made a way where there seemed to be no way in so many, so many times. He was her rock, her redeemer, her alpha, and her omega. It was her identity. Because of this, her influence on others was clothed with it. The Holy Spirit worked in her and produced fruit. She loved not only her family, but others. She was full of joy and ready to be an encourager to those she met. She had great peace in her life, even when storms raged within and without. She had patience and waited upon the Lord. She had kindness, as can be attested by many that she met, whom she gave of herself. She had goodness, and she believed in the best of people and believed in the golden rule. She had faithfulness in fulfilling the things she committed to do. She was gentle and humble in her work and personal life, as she understood the price Christ paid for our sin. And she had self-control by relying on the Holy Spirit to meet her needs. Her family, immediate and extended, still love her dearly. 
her brothers, sisters, nephews, nieces, grandchildren, and friends share that memories of her will remain fresh as a true mother and sister to us who always went out of her way to assist where she could, a rock in our lives, one who expressed love in a way that is very hard to find. She remembered birthdays, thought of others and made sacrifices to make them feel special and did not hesitate with an I love you loads and loads. She smiled with kindness and gave hugs, a friend for the ages, a joy bringer to church and at work. Her immediate family has always known her to be a woman of God. It would take books to express how we feel about her. As a wife and a mother, she went far above and beyond to see what her family, that her family was safe and well. She gave of herself and taught us how not only to be a unit, but also a family and also share with others and be thankful. She taught us to sing and one of her favorite songs was, I'm gonna try to sing it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so full and free. She loved us deeply, supported and took on any challenges that came against us. Her most enduring legacy is that she taught us about Christ and about eternal life. I have a poem that I shared with her that I would like to read to you, one of the versions of that's available out there. It is called, Our Times Are in Thy Hand. It was written by William Floyd. Our times are in thy hand. Father, we wish them there. Our life, our souls, all are all we leave entirely to thy care. Our times are in thy hand, whatever they may be, pleasing or painful, dark or bright, as best as we, as best may seem to thee. Our times are in thy hand, why should we doubt or fear? Our father's hand will never cause his child an endless tear. Our times are in thy hand, Jesus the crucified. The hands my many sins have pierced is now our guard and guide. Our times are in thy hand. We'll always trust in thee till we have left this weary land and all thy glory see. We praise God and give thanks for my mom, Violet, and the life that she led. She took on the Great Commission and did not bury her talent in the ground in fear. She used what she was given and the time that she had and multiplied it. Mark, Matthew twenty five twenty one says, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of our Lord. And we believe that she is in the joy of the Lord. Finally, I conclude with two things. The first is two Bible verses that she lived by. Galatians 6.10, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. The other is Hebrews 13.6, Don't forget to do good and share with those in need. The second I want to share with you is that her favorite words, she said, were, thank you, Jesus. She said them at all times, regardless of what was happening. So I say to you, thank you, Jesus, for it all, from the beginning to the future. Amen. We thank you for the 70 years and 361 days that were well lived. Thank you, Nikki, from sharing from the heart. Did I jump ahead? Okay.
Let us turn to God in prayer. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, you walk with us at all times, when life is hard and when it is a little easier. And when it's hard, you make your presence known in great and deep ways. We know that this time on earth is always too short. And yet, we have the hope of looking forward to life eternal with you. And so we give you thanks, most of all, for that great hope, for that truth and that joy that can keep us going when it seems like nothing else can. And we thank you that Violet believed that down to her toes, that she trusted in you and took such joy in her relationship with you that she was able to live each day with a positive attitude and with hope. You began moving in her life at the age of five a remarkable age for a young child to begin to understand your presence and your importance. And you created in her a beautiful soul for which we give you thanks. She lived her life with grace and peace. And her love of theology brought she and Nikki to this country and to this area and we are deeply indebted for both of them for the ways in which they have blessed our lives and been an important part of first presbyterian church and quaker memorial presbyterian church lord we thank you for the love and mercy that violet received from you and for her witness to her faith and her trust in you. We thank you for the joy and the hope that she found in worship and for her gracious ways of expressing that to those who helped put worship together. We thank you for her gift of music that she so joyfully shared and was such a gift to the chancel choir here at first. She's known for her infectious smile and for her positive attitude that kept her going even in the darkest of days. And we know that that is because of your presence within and surrounding her as well. And we give you thanks. We give you thanks for special memories of family times together, of friends together, of the blessings that we remember of love that was shared, and with the, the incredible way in which she shone the light of your love to others around her. She loved this congregation, and it was a joy for her to be a part of this family of believers. We know, O oh Lord, that Violet was not perfect and none of us are, but we come today with the hope and peace knowing that forgiveness has been given and eternal life is a reality because of your Son, our Lord and Savior. We know, too, that you, O oh Lord, are the comforter of all who sorrow, and you walk with us, and therefore we can have joy even in the midst of our tears. Violet was such a wonderful role model of being filled with your spirit that just exuded from her and the way she loved not only the ministries that she did, but the people whose lives she touched. As we find ourselves missing her presence, 
May we be filled with the sense of your presence in the lives and love of those around us and in the assurance of your love. Comfort her family and friends with the power of your love and in their grief and sorrow, help them to find the calm assurance that you surround and uphold them Give each of us such faith, the kind of faith that Violet had, for which we give you thanks, that by day and by night and in all times and all places, we might entrust those who are dear to us to your never-failing love in this life and the life to come. We thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you, Jesus. And in his name, we make this prayer. Amen. Glory be to God, and thank you, Jesus. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Violet. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming, a saint of your own choosing. Receive her into the arms of Your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. And the faith of Christ our Lord, who died and rose again to save us, and who now lives and reigns with You in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all 
surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds and the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Let all God's people say, Amen.